Hey everyone, Eran Stern here, and in this tutorial I'll show you how I've created this teaser in After Effects using Node 3 from Yanovox. So Node is a plugin for Final Cut Pro, Motion, Premiere Pro, and of course After Effects, which works on macOS and offers unprecedented power to create connected motion graphics and abstract particle universes. The new version includes 300 presets and templates, which are great starting point. And in fact, in this short teaser, I've used a couple of them to create the feeling of a 3D ride. In the new version, you will also see a sophisticated replicator that allows you to create instances of forms and distribute nodes and text around different shapes. And I'm going to demonstrate it in a moment. I'm also going to show you the Reeve mapped animation model that provides four slots to each you can assign from 40 different parameter destinations. And if this is not enough, you can also use an OBJ 3D model as a form for your particles. Now in this tutorial, I'm not going to cover the basics of nodes. If you want, you can check my previous nodes 2 tutorial to get the sense of how to use this plugin. Instead, I'll walk you through this composition and show you how I've used Nodes 3 to create this teaser. And this is for Keyframes, which is a motion graphics conference that will be held in Orlando, Florida at the end of February. So if you are watching this before this time, I urge you to check the website and take a look at the program. We have an impressive poll of speakers that can help you to grow your skill set and learn all about the latest innovations in the motion graphics field. And if we are mentioning our talented speakers, let me start by isolating few of the layers here and show you how I created some of the speaker's name as a background element. So I'm going to select this layer, which is just a deep purple solid layer. I'm going to solo it in place as well as solo the layer above it. I'm also going to turn on the visibility of this swatches layer. This is something that I brought from Illustrator. So I will be able to use the color scheme from the designer. I'm going to select this layer and this is just a plain solid layer, which I've already applied the nodes effect. I'm also going to press U because obviously we have a couple of keyframes here, in this case for the opacity. I'm going to press K a couple of times, so I'm going to move to the second keyframe. I'm just going to temporarily switch it to 100% so you can get a sense of what we have here. And you can see the names of our speakers. Now those names are being generated from this preset. So I'm going to start by clicking on Browse Presets and this is going to show us all the new presets that we have over here. We can scroll down this list, which is enormous. So you have tons of great starting points to choose from. But one of the new things here is that you can actually search inside this window. So I'm going to type the word cube and it's going to isolate all the presets with the cube name here. And in this case, I've chosen the cube text travel. Now, I've already applied it to this layer, so I'm just going to cancel out of it, and I'm going to show you what it consists of. So in this case, we are only using the text. I'm going to scroll down here, and you can see that under text, I've changed the text color by sampling from this swatches list that I have over here. And of course, you can change the color mode if you like, so you can go with different things. For example, 360 will give you this colorful arrangement, or you can go with different stuff like random U or random saturation, and you can get a sense of how this looks. In this case, I'm going to bring it back to the shade option. And in order to tell the effect what are the names that I want to use, I'm going to fold down the text option over here, and I'm going to click on edit. 
And this means that I can just copy and paste the list of all the speakers over here. This is what I did. I'm going to say OK. I'm also going to switch off the visibility of the swatchers so they won't be in our way. And all the rest of the things are happening automatically using the preset. So there are a couple of things happening here, but I'm not going to show you everything in this example. Let's just climb up to the next layer and we are going to see how this is working. First, I'm going to change back the opacity to 35% because this should be just a background element. And I'm going to move to the next one, which is actually this guy, Node's super complex connectors. And I'm going to make sure that we can see it. So in this case, as before, I'm starting with the preset. So browse presets. So in this case, this is it. Super complex connector. So for example, if I'm going to open up the lines, I've sampled the colors from the same swatches that I've showed you before. This means that it will fit to the color scheme of the design of the conference. And then of course I can use the new animation system over here in order to auto animate it. So in this case, I'm animating the speed on the transform rotation as well as position. And of course you can choose from 40 different options over here to auto animate different parameters inside this effect. So if I want this shape to move faster, instead of creating keyframes, what I can do is just change the speed and this shape is going to move faster towards us. So obviously this is a little bit too fast. I'm going to undo to the previous set. And I'm also going to open up the effects over here. And under the effects, we have a new engine, the replicate engine. So this is basically one thing over here, which consists of text, lines and nodes and we can replicate it as many times as we want using the replicator form so in this case i'm going to go with five and i'm going to show you that we have a couple of different shapes to choose from so for example if i'm going to choose random this is what i'm going to get so i'm going to choose the circle replicated form and i'm also going to change it back to 12 copies and just like that we have those two layers animating towards us. Now, what I wanted to create here is some sort of a ride, meaning that I'm duplicating different nodes system using the same layer and choosing different presets as a starting point. And in order to create the feeling that the camera is traveling towards them, I'm using this camera with an orbit. So I'm going to press Shift F4 this is going to show us the parent and link here inside After Effects. And you can see that this is what I have over here. And by the way, in order to create it in After Effects, all you need to do is select the camera, right click on it, and from the camera options, just create an orbit null. All right, I'm going to escape out of it. And then I'm going to press U to show you the keyframes over here in the null, which is only moving the camera on its Z position. So in order to isolate it, what I did is right click on the position options of the null and chose separate dimensions. This way I can only work on the Z position without affecting the other axis. Now I've timed the animation of the null to the beats of the song over here. So if I'm going to select my music here and press LL in sequence, I can show you the waveform and I've already took the time and created markers on this audio in order to time it with the animation. So if I'm going to go to this point, for example, and I'm also going to switch from active camera to let's say custom view number one, we can get a sense of how this looks. I'm also going to show you the camera over here. The camera, of course, is controlled using this null object. So let's just make sure that we can see it and you can get a sense of how this is working. So it is actually moving the camera and changing the animation according to what's happening with the sound. I'm also going to switch to, let's say, custom view number two. This is going to show us a more bird eye view of the composition so you can get a sense of the camera movement across the entire composition. So after creating this setup, I can return to my active camera. So the next one is this sci-fi pentagon tunnel. And in this case, once again, I'm starting with a preset. 
So I'm going to start to type P-E-N-T. This is going to show us the Pentagon options that we have over here. So this is the preset that I've chosen to start with. You can see the colors are completely different. And as before, you can easily change and modify them so they will fit your design. I did the same thing for the next layer, which is Exclusion Tubular. This is, of course, the name of the preset. I'm going to switch it on so you can see how this looks. And then open up the ingredients that you want to colorize or change. For example, here, I'm going to drill down the lines and you can sample from your colors. So everything is going to match and look as coherent as possible. And I know that this is a little bit over the top and I'm using different kinds of presets. Not everything is going to melt together, but at least in terms of colors and appearance, we can make it work. The next layer that we have here is Blast with Letters. Once again, I'm going to enable it and move it so we can see what we are working with. So if I want this Blast to be a little bit faster, I can very easily change it from here and get a sense of how this works. Once again, in order to see it in real time, I need to move a little bit back and then press space bar and this is going to render. And I just want you to see the speed of the rendering. This is why I'm doing it. So let's just leave it like that. Moving on, I'm going to enable the next two layers, which are using the elevator preset as well as the flying characters and lines. So let's enable both of them. We are going to create this soup of letters. And if I'm going to show you once again under the text option, you can see that I've just wrote the word keyframes. And this is just going to select the letters as particles to appear over here. And I did the same thing for the other layer over here, which is actually this layer. So the elevator layer is using a different preset, but it's actually nice that you can mix and match different nodes layers inside the 3D space of After Effects. But I do want to show you what I created here. So these keyframes text is actually near the little asterisk sign. So in order to see it better, I'm just going to go back to the Blast with Layers layer. I'm going to switch it off. Then I'm going to zoom in and you can see that near every asterisk here, the word keyframes is written. The only thing that you need to do is choose the fonts. Note that there are a couple of accelerated fonts which are going to behave in real time or you can choose from a different font and this is going to look inside your installed font. It's also going to give you a nice preview so you can get a sense what you are selecting. All right, let's move on. I'm going to switch on the visibility for this one as well. And I'm going to show you this radial crazy, which is one of my favorite, almost like a lens flare, which is created using this form of particles, in this case, just nodes. Now, what I have over here is also a Triton effect, which helps to moderate all the colors that this preset is offering us. So I don't need all the rainbow colors and I'm using the Triton effect with a 50% of blending in order to make it more connected to the colors that we are using over here. Now, in most cases, I'm also using this master completion in order to reveal those instances of nodes. And just so you can see how this works, I'm going to switch off the visibility of all the other layers, press U and go to the beginning over here. And I'm just going to press spacebar so you can see how it's going to reveal on screen. And this animation is all driven by these two keyframes. So what we can do here is tell the effect to actually animate all the component by creating keyframe at the beginning here with a value of zero. And then over time, by setting a second keyframe with a value of 100, we are creating this nice reveal. All right, we have two more layers over here. So this is the keyframe conference as well as its background, which is this circuit traveling. And once again, I'm starting with the preset over here and I'm animating it on screen. And then in this case, I've also used under the rendering, 
the fog option in order to tint it to a different color. So I've chosen the dark purple as my fog color, and then I've animated the depth influence. So this background is not going to be too intrusive. If I'm going to change it to none, you can get a sense of how this looks without this treatment. Right, so one more option that you can use here is motion blur. Now, in order to show you how this works, I'm going to bring everything back. And I'm also going to, let's say, bring my timeline over here where we have some fast motion. And in order to apply motion blur for the nodes effect, you need to enable it inside the rendering section. So you have a couple of options. You can go from low, which looks like this, all the way up to high. Now I'm just changing one instance over here. I actually want to control everything at one go. So I'm going to go to the After Effects timeline. I'm going to select all my nodes layer over here. And then in the search field, I'm going to start to type the word motion blur. So actually two words. And then I'm going to make sure that I can see everything by tapping on the tilde key. And this means that I can just mark key around all the instances over here and select one of them. Let's start with the low settings. And then I'm going to return to the full interface. I'm going to go to the beginning, press spacebar just to preview the result. And if you feel that you need more quality, then obviously you can go with higher settings. Note that it will render a little bit slower, but it will look very smooth. And just to show you how this looks, I'm going to switch to high and you can get a sense that it is really smooth. All right, I'm going to switch it back to the low settings. Then I'm going to clear my search over here. Then I'm just going to note that I have another black solid layer here, which I set to be an adjustment layer. On top of it, I have this fast box blur effect. This is what I'm calling depth of field vignette. And if I'm going to press M, we can see that I have a mask over here that I've modified using the mask expansion and of course, enable tons of feather just to create some soft edges over here across the entire piece. Obviously, I have another composition here, which I haven't covered. This is the keyframe conference composition where I've animated all the different illustrator layers here inside After Effects. And if you are into motion graphic stuff, don't forget to check out the keyframes conference coming up this February. But this is it for this one. I hope you find this tutorial useful and I invite you to download a trial copy from fxfactory.com and play with Nodes 3 so you can also create these complex motion graphics universes. It's fun, it's easy, and it can be used for many different tasks. I'm looking forward to see you soon in another tutorial or maybe even in real life, who knows? Until then, I'm going to leave you with this trailer once again. Thank you.